7,500 feet high elevation in Laramie. Utah State, 21 and 7. Ryan Odom's team is 10 and 5, 34 in the net, and looking for a win here on the road. And as Dan pointed out, every game, even if it's not a quad one opportunity, they need to win. Starting lineups for both of these teams. For Utah State, that great comeback against Nevada, that could turn into a quad one win if Nevada pops inside 30 and below. And Hunter Maldonado's got some help, especially three-point shooters. And Wyoming needs Brendan Wenzel and Xavier Ducell to hit threes. And we told you that Jeff Linder is not here tonight. On the left, Sundance Wicks. He handles the offense. Ken DeWeese handles the defense. DeWeese will act as the head coach and will speak to the officials, but it is a co-coach situation tonight. DeWeese has been with Coach Linder for quite some time, going back to Northern Colorado. Sundance Wicks, a native Wyoming. Ready to roll. First possession, Wyoming. They showed just how dangerous they are two games ago when they went to New Mexico and won at the pit, and it was not a nail biter. They, at times, dominated that game. Shoga gets a hand on it, pries it loose. And Utah State wants to play up tempo tonight because Wyoming has very little depth. And Bearstow, right out of the gate, buries a three. Bearstow's that guy who does a little bit of everything. Sometimes he leaves you searching, wanting more, but he lets the game dictate what he does that night. Never imposes his will on it. Ducell around a screen, down the lane, right hand, nice drive. And a 3-2 start here in Laramie. Well, you mentioned Utah State wants to play at a faster pace. They typically score in the upper 70s. Oh, Ashworth with a nice pass, and Dorius finishes. Dorius has played really well over the last 12 games or so. Gives them a little bit of defensive presence on the interior. Not a great shot blocker, but he alters many shots, and he's a screen and dive finisher. Odin has played well at times. Misses the jumper. Dorius with the rebound. Ashworth was coming off the bench until the injury to Ryland Jones, and Jones is still out, though he is here. And Shulga buries a three. Right off the bat, you see a couple of threes from the Aggies. They lead the country in three-point percentage at just under 41%. They've got a number of guys that have the freedom to shoot anytime they see daylight. And Ashworth is second in the nation. Ducell uncorks a three. We talk about shooting it well from beyond the arc. In conference play, Ducell at 45%. It's a good sign getting him going early. Shulga again. Goodness. Utah State, who outscored Nevada 43 to 19 in the second half to complete that comeback win, looks like they're still playing against Nevada <laughs> in that second half. Yeah, they were on fire in that second half, as was Will Baker to start the game. I watched the first half just for the prep in this game. Will Baker had maybe the greatest five minute stretch I've ever seen. Five made threes, 22 points. It was five amazing. Five minutes. Well, that's one of the things that they do so well. They, they shoot threes, and it's not just Ashworth. Shulga can shoot him. Bearstow picks his spots. He can shoot it. And then Taylor Funk, who's a big, really a stretch four, is dangerous as well. And Taylor Funk, he'll be in a lot of pick-and-pop scenarios. Sixth-year senior. He played his first five years, including a redshirt year at St. Joe's in Philadelphia. There's the pop into the corner. Ashworth, and he's off on the three. Bearstow knocks it out of bounds. Wyoming is really thin, and for Ken DeWeese and Sundance Wicks, of course, they lost Graham E.K., preseason player of the year in the conference, Noah Reynolds, their leading scorer, and then the three players that left. Maldonado is the last Cowboy up right now in terms of starting lineup. But the guys that have come off the bench and have played a lot, Ducell, Odin, this guy Wenzel, they've had their moments. He talked to the coaching staff, and. They love the maturity that this whole ball club has taken into it. The older guys like Maldonado approaching it the right way. The young guys, the experience, the work ethic they're showing, the improvement that they're showing. Uh, but they've had a, lots of different things they've had to work through this year. They lead the country in 16 different starting lineups. 
It's not the category that you want in, on Ken Palm. That's a foul as Wenzel got Funk, sort of. And Taylor Funk will get to the line and shoot two. And the thing about Wyoming, they, they are so young. So maybe it's not a surprise that they went into New Mexico, beat New Mexico decisively, and then came back home and lost to Air Force. And Air Force, I'm telling you, they are starting to win games. Yeah, they are a, a tough out again with Joe Scott running the Princeton offense. They've got a lot of tough, hard-nosed players. But you're right in the fact that a lot of times young players, you don't know what you don't know. So you don't know how hard it is to go into the pit in Albuquerque and come away with a win. Dorius out and Dan Atkin, the Brit, the graduate student, is coming in. Look for him to be active on the glass. Leads in the country in double doubles off the bench. He would start for most teams, but he has found a role as the sixth man with Utah State, and it's fit him well. He's a versatile defender, which means he's going to be on Maldonado while he's in. And you can see him chase Maldonado to the wing. Giselle around the screen. Wenzel thought about a three, got Bearstow in his face. Shot clock down. Hunter Thompson takes the three, and it rims out. Bearstow has the rebound. Lob and a dunk. Akin from Bearstow. This Utah State team really has no traditional point guard other than Ryland Jones, who's out with injury. Ashworth will handle it at times. Shulga can initiate offense, as can Bearstow. To sell. Boy, both teams shooting it well. Wyoming just 8 and 18. They were selected second in the preseason poll in the conference. That's before everybody got hurt. Nice pass. Atkin blocked from behind, and the ball still <laughs> goes in. <laughs> That's when you know it's going Utah State's way right now. Block shot leads to a bucket. Kenny Foster in right now for Wyoming. Wyoming's bench is essentially three deep. Dussel fires it. And the rebound to Thompson, and he's fouled. He'll get free throws. Max Sholga, Mountain West Conference Player of the Week, hot right now, and Utah State off to a great start. You are watching March to March tonight, presented by Principal. Hot start, Utah State, a 17-8 lead. Daisy Cottage Cheese brings us, along with Dan Dickow, our keys to the game. The Utah State pin fouls on Wyoming, limited bench, as we've already mentioned, and push the pace. They're one of the best, not just in the Mountain West, but in the country of really getting up and down the floor for Wyoming. You got to rebound simply because Utah State is one of the better rebounding teams in the Mountain West. And you also need to help Hunter Maldonado. They've done that so far with a couple threes. Not quite Laradice, but Laradice lost. Graham E.K., preseason player of the year, out, foot injury, gone. Noah Reynolds, concussion. He was their leading scorer, out. And of course, three players left the program on February 8th, leaving the Cowboys razor thin. They've had their moments that upset at New Mexico, certainly that, but they've taken some lumps as well. And tonight they're without their head coach, Jeff Linder. Linder has left the team to be by the side of his father, who is ill. Ken DeWeese, the Sundance Wicks, our co-coaching. DeWeese is the one that will speak to the officials. In terms of timeouts, he said they will consult with each other. Thompson's free throw is on the way. That's the first point for Wyoming that did not come from Xavier Dussel. He had all eight to begin with. Wenzel out, Odin in. And Utah State has five different players who have scored already. And that is characteristic of Utah State. They've got five players that average in double figures. They're a team that really spreads the wealth, so to speak. 14th in the nation in offensive efficiency. You pointed out the best three-point shooting team in the country, and bench scoring is a real strength. 
Bairstow kicks. Idle Rock, who's played well off the bench lately, misses the three. Wyoming with the rebound. Good block out there from Odin. Aiken is one of the best in the conference on the offensive glass. Trail three, Thompson missed it, and those are the shots that Wyoming has to hit. Well, 10 times this year they've made 10 or more threes, so they've got the ability to get hot. But undermanned with a limited bench, you've got to find who's going to step up in addition to Maldonado. Utah State looks flustered here, and Bears, though, one too many hops. I don't know about that one. That looked good to me. Sometimes a move is so good it tricks even the officials. All right, another look. Ooh, that's, I don't know, Dan. I'm glad I didn't have to make that call. Yeah, I agree with you there. I know if, we, if it was in the NBA All-Star game, they would have given him about five more steps. You can't even call what that was, a basketball game. That was just like a, a shooting exhibition and a layup dunk contest. Maldonado falling away. He really has to work for his points because every team that faces Wyoming zeroes in on him. That need. To be fair, he doesn't make it easy on himself. He's not a great three-point shooter. That's something that has never been a strength of his. So he plays in the mid-range. He plays in the post. Defenses converge. He's still good enough to get those shots off more times than not. And he's, he's playing point guard. Now, he was somewhat of a point guard last year, but that was normally a two-man game with E.K. Lowe and he, and he on a wing. Now E.K.'s not here. That role has completely changed without E.K. That was about the most difficult action to guard in the league last year, a two-man game, but between Maldonado and Ike. Atkin floats that one in. Maldonado waiting for a screen from Thompson and tried to split the double. Ashworth finds Bearstow, who loses the basketball. Utah State likes to play fast, but not that fast. Well, it was the right play. It was the right pass from Ashworth. Bearstow just unable to corral it, control it, and finish. You didn't think he was thinking ahead about the one hand or the two hand dunk. Both of these teams have to bring their own energy tonight because the crowd is rather thin, and that's because a severe storm is supposed to hit here in Wyoming and in Laramie in particular later on tonight and into tomorrow. Idle Rock turned down the three. Ashworth catch, shoot. And normally those go down. Wyoming dodged the bullet there. That's the one guy you can't lose sight of. More times than not, he will knock that down. Caden Powell in the game for Wyoming. Maldonado backing down, gets it up, and missed on the hook. Ashworth, for his size, a good rebounding guard. Bearstow kicks, Idle Rock three. Uh-uh, it was a line drive. And both teams have kind of cooled down a bit. Eight minutes in, first of two. Colorado State at San Diego State coming up on CBS Sports Network after this one as it's crunch time in the Mountain West. A conference that has five teams in the top 48 of the net. And right now in Jerry Palm's bracketology model has four teams in the NCAA tournament. Powell in deep, and he's fouled. Timeout in Laramie. Utah State and Wyoming. It's a seven-point start for the Aggies. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. By Daisy Cottage Cheese, only Daisy Cottage Cheese will do. And by AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, secure. 19-12, Utah State on top. This is a huge game for Utah State. And you know what? Every game they're going to play for the rest of the way is going to be enormous. Because look at this. Top 50 net ranking. Net, of course, is the metric that best parallels the selection committee's numbers. Boise State at 23. And this Utah State team right now at 34. Nevada's at 35. And New Mexico's hit a kind of a bump in the road. 
sits right now at 47. And Utah State's still searching for a quad one win. As of now, they're 0-4 in quad one. They're fine in quad two, but there's a possibility, as you mentioned earlier, that new Nevada game could shift depending on how Nevada plays the last stretch of the season become a quad one. But very difficult to keep track. We'll do our best to explain a lot of those points throughout the night. And, and one of the reasons why there's such uh, heavyweights in terms of the net five teams in that top 47 is not only is this conference really good at the top, but the middle is much improved. San Jose State is much better. Air Force is much better. And if the basement is Wyoming, there's nobody below 200 in the net. Not many conferences can say that. Yeah, that's a, a really good point as Funk knocks down the three. But San Jose State, last couple of years, they were in that 300 category. They are all the way up to 107. And so, you know, that, depending on where it's at, can become a quad two win. Maldonado, Odin off a screen, misses the three. Right now, Wyoming. Two of seven from distance, so a lot of threes early. Well, that's a tough cover for a young player like Nate Barnhart of Wyoming. His upside is tremendous, but Taylor Funk, he's got all the experience in the world. Just jab step, loosen the defense, reads the reaction, elevates for the three. Ashworth off the screen, a floater, and hits it. He's so shifty coming off to first off to set up the hand back and then just the little shiftiness and looking over at the roll man versus shooting it himself. Get the defense to commit to the roll man. Open the opportunity for yourself. That's Maldonado. That's hard work over Atkin for the bucket. One thing that Ryan Odom told us about Ashworth is that he's a better threat off the catch rather than off the dribble and having to kind of run the team with Ryland Jones out, ball's in his hands a lot. Oh, look at Maldonado turning the corner on that step up pick and roll. Because he's not a shooter, a lot of times you say go under the screen, but you have to give some kind of resistance at the point of the screen. You can't give him the direct line to turn the corner or he will finish at the rim all night long. Matt Shogos hit a couple threes is back in. And he walks. It's a travel and a turnover. Good call there from the official. Four turnovers for Utah State. Shulga knew it. Ryan Odom and the entire uh, community <laughs> <laughs> up there really having to support Shulga starting last year. He is a, a native of the Ukraine and played on the Ukrainian national team. Maldonado with the rebound. Ashworth in transition. Bearstow the Aussie. Akin, who's a Brit. And Shoga lost it again. Another turnover. Maldonado back to Odin. And a foul. I think it was Ashworth. Active hands on the defensive end of the floor for Wyoming. Forcing the fourth turnover, excuse me, fifth turnover of the night for Utah State, which is not like them. Allows them to get out in transition. Odin at the line for two. Odin coming off a, a nice game against Air Force. Had a season high 19 points. He's a really uh, interesting player in terms of length and skills. Ashworth sits down. This is where having Shulga as a guy who can handle the ball and Bearstow really helps Utah State in the absence of Ryland Jones. Yeah, Idle Rock even has some possessions where he can handle it. Coach Odom trusts him. He actually started for Coach Odom at UMBC when they had that historic Upset of number one at the time, Virginia. He's the last guy from that team that's still playing. Shoga, that's an ambitious three. Kick, Idle Rock. This time a little more arc and it goes down. Got to block out because Utah State is active on the glass. 
Can't give up extra opportunities, which lead to wide open threes many times. Foster off a screen. Left hand high off the glass, and it goes. Nice finish for Kenny Foster. He's battled injuries the last couple years. Good to see him able to finish out the last part of his senior year healthy. Atkin calling for the ball. Shulga takes the screen. Thompson and Atkin kick. Idle Rock. Clock is down. Shot is up. And stopped by Wyoming. Nice whip pass to the corner, but Thompson misses the three. And Wyoming from distance now two of nine. But on that last play, that's a perfect example of how much attention Maldonado creates from the defense. Hunter Thompson was wide open, no one within 10, 12 feet of him. This will be a baseline out of bounds. Just the fifth team foul on Wyoming. Utah State has just three. Not a whole lot of whistles in this game so far. Funk just in time to catch the pass. Shulga. And he's short on that one. Funk can't save it. Yeah, he does save it. <laughs> but Ducell up the floor. And Funk got a hand on it. Utah State on the roads. The lead is 10 in Laramie tonight. Twenty seven seventeen Utah State on top Dan mentioned Ryan Odom and his run at UMBC we're talking Utah State taking on the road to UNLV March to March presented by principal so Utah State again on the road and again they're going to have to win that ball game to get themselves in and off that bubble this is the game you're talking about here 2018 this is a historic win. UMBC 16 seed, a one seed Virginia, and this wasn't close. 75 54. And of course, Virginia bounced back the next year to win a national championship. There's the profile. Of course, his father, a great coach and terrific basketball ambassador, Dave Odom. A lot of people see a head coach at a higher profile school like Utah State. But they don't understand all the work and the many stops that lead into that opportunity. You see there are seven, eight, nine stops or so. So many mentors I'm sure had a part in carving up and creating his coaching philosophy. Shulga away with the ball. Ashworth hunting a three. Dorius is back in. Will drop step in a left hand. Well, single coverage there from Hunter Thompson. Dorius, not known as a post scorer, but when you give him that much space, a guy can get to his speed, sweet spot easily. Nice left hand finish there. From inside the arc, Utah State is six of six. And seven different Aggies have scored already tonight. Thompson, they're gonna, they're gonna need some of those threes to start going down. Two of ten is Wyoming. Five of 12 from distance, Utah State. Bearstow. Shulga, another three. And that's well short. Made his first two. Has missed his last three. Well, every shot of his now has come from beyond the arc. He can get hot on occasion. Had a game earlier this year where he was five of five from beyond the arc, but I think he's best when he puts the ball on the deck. Yep, it did hit the foot of Dorius. Good call by the officials. 
David Hall, Greg Nixon, DG Nelson, our trio in the Mountain West tonight. Foster again to the bucket and gets that one to drop. Wyoming back within 10. Ashworth open and short. Tries it again. Short again. Wyoming with an opportunity here as Utah State has slowed down offensively. Odin right by his man. Oh, no help side. But Trevin Dorius, you have to understand <laughs> the guy you're closing out to is a lot quicker than you. Close out with some space, contest with your length if he by chance does shoot it from beyond the arc. Funk more comfortable 20 feet from the bucket. It would not be fun guarding Steven Ashworth. The amount of screens they set for him and the movement. And Bearstow hits his second three. And look, if you're trying to stop Funk and you're trying to stop Ashworth from shooting threes and Shulga, Bearstow, if you give him an open look, will hurt you. Well, he's almost like the perfect fifth option on a team. You don't have to call plays for him. He's long. He can handle the ball, create plays for others. Defensively, he's really good. He's active on the glass. Another look at the blow by from Jeremiah Oden. I mean, no help side whatsoever. I'm sure that will be spotlighted in film breakdown tomorrow. That film breakdown may occur here in Laramie for Utah State if they can't get out of here with that impending blizzard. And we may be sitting in with them. And again, if you're just joining us, we're in Laramie and much of the United States and in particular the north and northwest of the country undergoing a lot of snow and it's supposed to hit Laramie here later tonight. And if you know anything about Wyoming sports, you know that fans from this great state come from all over three, four, five hour drives to come in and watch football and basketball. But on a night like tonight, not wise to do so. So if you're sitting at home and nice and warm, we miss you. But the Cowboys playing hard, trying to hang with Utah State. That's a block, and it's off of Powell. And he, the Cowboy fans that are here aren't real happy. Well, they're making their presence known. We'll get another look. Terrific pass from Ducell. Powell goes up. Yeah, it looks like a good block. And then, unfortunately, off the hands of Powell. You know, they had plans to redshirt him. And with all the injuries and then departures, He's had to play, and to be honest, I think he's played really well. He's got a bright future. He plays hard. He, he's going to get stronger in time. Bearstow drives it to the bucket. Maldonado the rebound. Maldonado backing in. Runs into Dorius. And that's a foul on Trevin Dorius. Utah State's lead is 11. Under four in the first. 22 21, Utah State trying to get to 11 and 5 in the Mountain West Conference. Coming up, ATT 5G at the half. Ashley Shamadi, Chris Walker, Renee Montgomery, and Gary Parrish, the pride of Memphis, standing by in our New York studio to get you up to speed on everything. They may preview that Boise or the San Diego State Colorado State game that's coming up second end of our double header three point shooting early especially for Utah State yeah, six threes from a combined four players Utah State 17 of their 24 field goal attempts have come from beyond the arc I would expect them to balance that out a little bit more but six made threes they got it going early there's your three point shooting Wyoming right now two of ten. Xavier Ducell has both of the makes for Wyoming, and he's back in the ball game. Foster. Powell, good catch. But Dorius with a block or a foul? And I think a foul. 
outside official Greg Nixon had foul. And that's going to send Wyoming to the line. Powell only a 59% free throw shooter on the year, only 17 attempts. Ooh. I don't know, Dorius looked like that was clean on the initial touch of the ball, but then got him on the forearm with the follow through. Free throw is good. If you're looking for a silver lining for Wyoming in this season, it's, it's hard to find that. True. But a guy like Powell, who you pointed out, is getting time and looks good. Wenzel's getting more time. Odin's getting more run. Barnhart has really shined a redshirt freshman. Ducell getting to do more than he's had to do and doing it at times pretty well. That's, I guess, what you hope for next year pushes you forward. Yeah, and what you also have to be aware of is they've got the problem, maybe the best player in the conference coming back next year he has missed this whole year with injury. Graham E.K., 19 points, nine rebounds a game. Terrific defender as well. You can't just replace him. Funk drives, charge. Did you hear the crowd in unison yell flop? <laughs> I've not heard that before this year, but that when Funk went down in the middle of that play, everybody here was screaming flop. Yeah, that was... I think he just tripped. Yeah. That's no flop. That's, no, that's an offensive not foul. Not a flop. That's a great job by Powell to step in front, get outside the restricted area. Funk was grabbing his elbow there when he was about to get up. We'll keep an eye on that, see if there's anything to be really worried about. So even the fans are, are quick on the flop trigger now. They got to change that rule with the rules committee. I mean, a lot of people get upset with the officials. The officials have to call the rule as it's stated in the rule book. Oh, look at Ducell. Catch and shoot and falling away from 24. And we made a lot about Utah State shooting. That's three threes in the first half from Ducell. And here comes Wyoming. They're within six. Idle Rock turns down the three over Barnhart, who fouls him before the block. Dan Dickow, this, this looks like you. Catch and shoot and, I mean, quick release. Well, shooters have to have a short memory on misses, but they have to have a long memory on makes. So he's made a couple earlier tonight. Every single catch from here on out, he needs to be ready to pull the trigger. And remember, some of these Wyoming juniors have two more years left because they have a COVID year. So it's almost like they're sophomores. And then the transfer portal, you can get old and experienced and improve in a hurry. Unfortunately for Wyoming, the three guys that came to them didn't fit, didn't work. They decided on their own to move on, but many teams have improved quickly through that portal. Maldonado, this time against Bearstow. He's been guarded. There's quick trigger again to sell. Bleak and you missed it. What did I say? Catch ready to fire. Xavier Ducell has caught fire, pulling Wyoming, the Cowboys, to within three. At Domino's, we are obsessed with delivery. I'm not sure other guys think about delivery. So it breaks our heart when we see delivery done wrong. Like soggy fries. They're soggy and they don't deliver well. We knew we had to do something about it. Turns out the solve wasn't better fries. It was tots. Tots. Hot, crispy, golden. Tots. Because we're a pizza company, we loaded them with pizza toppings. Our tots are made to be delivered. Introducing new loaded tots. And they're only $6.99 each when you order pizza and tots. What else could be better than that? Remember when we said, hey, Wyoming's going to have to start hitting some threes to get back in this game. And that's exactly what Xavier Ducell has done. Back to back triples, mind you. Every shooter on the catch, you must be ready. Anytime you are handling the ball in a pick and roll situation, you must recognize and realize the defender goes up or gets caught on the screen. That is a shot opportunity. Ducell, he's been prepared and ready. Four triples on the evening already. Bearstow, Isla Rock went hard. There was no call there. There wasn't a flop and there wasn't a charge. I like that. Just a play on. Akin in tight and it's blocked. I think Maldonado got it. Under two minutes left. Wyoming down double digits 
has climbed within three, an 8-0 run. They've hit four of their last six shots, and a couple Ducell threes have helped. They tried to get him another look there on the set play. Rising, Ashworth with the foul, and two free throws for Xavier Ducell. Maldonado, we've spotlighted him with a lot of the stuff he does on the offensive end of the floor. That time in help side, quick reaction to save a bucket with the block shot. Ducell's an interesting player. As a freshman from Scottsdale, averaged nearly 10 points a game last year with so much of the offense running through EK and Maldonado in two-man actions. His numbers dipped to about seven and a half a game, but the last 12 games in Mountain West play, he's been really good, averaging over 10 and a half points a game. Let's continue that tonight. That foul is costly for Utah State. Steven Ashworth with his third personal with a minute 34 left in this first half on the bench. Oh, his third foul. He's one of five from the field. He's the heart and soul of what they do on the offensive end on the floor. Shoulder off the screen. Man down. That's Funk. And a whistle inside. That's going against Wyoming. And I believe Kenny Foster gets it. Wyoming is within a point. You see the run. Dussel has fueled it. He's got 16 to lead the Cowboys. And again, Jeff Linder not with the team. His father is ill. It was Ken DeWeese. He and Sundance Wicks, the other top assistant, running the team tonight. Shulga for an end of one and one from Ukraine. And we told you Utah State and Ryan Odom, they're, they're sort of the St. Mary's of the Mountain West in terms of international players, aren't they? Yeah, six different countries are represented on this roster. Many of them have international experience playing in FIBA events. It's a timeout. Thompson was falling out of bounds. Saves the possession. Minute 17 left. Entertaining first half. Cowboys on the comeback trail. Wyoming on top. Excuse me. Trailing 33-31. Utah State with the lead. Minute 17 left first half. Looked like Utah State was going to run away with this one, Dan Dickow. That is until Xavier Ducell hit a pair of back-to-back -back threes. They've done a nice job of limiting Utah State's leading scorer, Stephen Ashworth, and kind of weathering the early storm of six made threes to pull within two. Outside of the game, Dan Dickow pointed out, well, only needs help for Hunter Maldonado, and Xavier Ducell has been more than helpful. 16 points, four of six from distance. And this is Ducell, ball in his hands. Foster kicks. Odin on his way in and scores. Now it's tied. 33 Difficult. apiece. Difficult shot going left, fading, shooting it with the right hand back in front of the defense. The run is 12-1. Idle Rock on the way. No. Wyoming's in a spot with a quick shot. They could go two for one. And I don't know that they're really built for that. This is not an up-tempo team. Yeah, not this year. And it was tight. They corralled the rebound with 40 on the clock. Had it been more around 43, 44 seconds, it would have been a definite opportunity. Trying for a back cut. Knocked away. And now, Utah State can play for the last shot. Should be another mid-pick and roll with Shulga. Atkins waiting with the pick. Shulga, right side, goes down. Block, Thompson! Just before the buzzer. How about this? Wyoming under man without their head coach Utah State 34 in the net opened up a nice lead And we're headed to halftime Oh, he didn't block it. He hit the side of the backboard from our angle. It looked like a block that angle clearly off the glass 
33 33 after the break we'll send you to Ashley and the gang in New York you're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network March to March presented by principal